The story store, the story store. Stories, surprises, and secrets galore. And dreams that come true are waiting for you inside the store. The story store, the story store. Wonders are waiting for you to explore. Into the window, open the door. Into the story store. It was the first day of spring, and Granny Clump was full of the joys of life as she made her merry way to the story store with her young grandson, Sammy. But when they entered the story store, they found poor George in a sorry state. How do, Granny Clump? Sorry I can't raise my hat. No offence. Never you mind about that, George. You don't look at all well. Whatever is the matter? I don't rightly know what's wrong. I was in the middle of my spring cleaning when I suddenly felt all cobbly-wobbly-fied. But I must finish the cleaning no matter what. The magic inspector will be here to inspect the story store at 12 noon today. You mustn't get up, George. I think you have spring fever. But everything must be spick and span when the magic inspector arrives. If we fail the inspection, he could close the story store for good. Never you mind about that. Pip and Sammy will take care of the story store for you, won't you, boys? And as for you, George, I'm going to look after you in my garden until you're all better. But the magic inspector... Oh. This is what you need to make you feel better, George. Fresh air, sunshine, and a little gentle exercise helping me with my knitting. You're not well, George. You can't even raise your hat, can you? No, I can't. I'll believe you're all right when you can raise your hat, and not before. I know what it is to suffer, you know. Nobody knows what I've suffered at the hands of my feet. I'm a martyr to my bunions. I could tell you things about my bunions that would make your blood run cold. In the meantime, Sammy and Pip were having a wonderful time exploring the story store. I wonder what this tin of Speedo powder does. Bunions, fancy scientific names, you know. But I say, a bunion is a bunion. They may know their onions, but I know my bunions. And I'll tell you another thing about my bunions. Well, Pip, that's enough Speedo powder for now. Let's see what this Movo lever does. Wow! Did you see that, Pip? The move lever moved that box. <laughs> Everything's moving now. Ooh, ooh, this is great fun. Ha! Wow! Oh! Stop it! Get away from me! Oh no! All the boxes in the story store are moving. Sorry story of my bunions, George. Oh, look, the poor soul's sound asleep. I'll just tiptoe off and leave him in peace. 
A good sleep is the very thing he needs to make him feel better. And so George slept peacefully in the garden as the minutes ticked away and the time drew ever nearer for the visit from the magic inspector. What a mess, Pip. Look at what you've done. Oh, all right then, look at what we've done. I wonder if we can tidy up this mess with the mover lever. Funny, nothing in the story store seems to be moving. But something was moving in Granny's garden. It was George, and he was still sound asleep. There's something wrong with this machine, Pip. George will be furious when he finds out you've broken it. Oh, all right, he'll be furious when he finds out we've broken it. Oh, it's you, George. Oh, oh, I must have dozed off. What time is it? Oh, no, it's almost 12 o'clock. The magic inspector will be here at any moment. And look at the state of the story store. I'll try sprinkling the speedo powder on the move lever. Oh dear, there's the magic inspector. I hope everything's all right at the story store. Let's hope this works. How do, George? How do, Alfred? Ah, oh, well, George, lad. Do you mind if I do my inspection of the story store? Not at all, Alfred. I can hardly stop my own twin brother from doing his job. Well, now, where shall I start? Everything looks very spick and span, I must say. I'll just test some of this vanishing cream. Put a little touch of it on my head. Yes. Oh, that seems quite satisfactory. Now, what will I test next? I just came to give you some moral support, George. Let's see what a little sprinkle of speedo powder will do. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see if this move machine works. Hmm. Well, that certainly did the trick. After his inspection of the story store, the magic inspector began to write in his book, while George waited anxiously for the verdict. Well, Alfred, have I passed? No, you haven't passed. <gasps> You've done better than that. You have the best magic shop I've ever seen in all my life. It's lovely. And so you get a special prize of a gold star in your bowler hat. Hooray! 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 Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Thanks, Alfred. You deserve it, lad. Congratulations. See you again next year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Bye-bye, Alfred. Once again. You did it, George. You did it. You raised your hat. Now I know that everything really is all right after all. <laughs> the story store, the story store. Who wonders are waiting for you to explore. Peep through the window, open the door. Into the story store, store. The story store. Story surprises and secrets galore And dreams that come true are waiting for you 
inside the story store. The story store, the story store, stories, surprises, and secrets galore, and dreams that come true are waiting for you inside the store. The story store, the story store, wonders are waiting for you to explore. Into the window, open the door, into the story store. One fine day, George was in the story store arranging a display of boxes when Pip came running in, playing with his friend the dog biscuit. Be careful, Pip, or you'll knock down the boxes. There now, what did I tell you? Up you come. Just look at the mess you've made. No, Pip, you can't have a cake. No, now off you go and don't get into any more mischief. You only get a cake when you're good. Just then, Sammy Clump came in with a note from his granny. Hello, George. My granny asked me if you could please send these things round by special delivery. I'm sure I have the very things your granny's looking for. Here's a packet of Vanisher washing powder. It makes stains disappear. And here's a packet of Razor flour. Anything you use it in will be lighter than air. Not again. Wow, what was that? That was Pip crashing into the boxes again. I think it's time I did something to keep him out of mischief. Now, Pip, I want you to take these two packets to Granny Clump, special delivery. And whatever you do, don't get them mixed up. All right, Sammy. Maybe now we'll get some peace to put these boxes up at last. But on the way to Granny Clump's house, Pip and the Dog Biscuit began to chase one another until Pip dropped the packets in a puddle and they became so covered in mud that it was impossible to tell which was which. My, my, Pip, these packets are so covered in mud that I can't make out which is which. Do you know which is which, Pip? You do? Is that the Vanisher washing powder? Good. Now that I know which is which, I'll put the Vanisher washing powder there, that's right, isn't it? And I'll put the Razor flour there to bake my cakes. Well, I'm wearing my freshly washed petticoats now, and these cakes are baked to a turn. Mmm, delicious. Ooh, what, what was that? Ooh, help! What's happening to me? I'm rising into the air! Help! Help! Get me down! Get me down! Pip! Pip! Get George to get me down! All right, Sammy. As soon as you give me that box of cakes, the display will be finished. Oh, no. Here comes Pip. Look out! He's going to knock over the display. What's the matter, Pip? I think he wants me to go somewhere with him. Oh, no. Do you think something has happened to my poor old granny? We'd better go and see. Help me, George. Get, get me down. It's all me. right, Granny Clump. We'll soon get you down. I can't understand it, George. You've washed your petticoats in the razor self-raising flour and it's made them lighter than air. Did you bake your cakes in the vanisho powder? I must have. They've all disappeared. That's because vanish your powder makes stains vanish. If you use too much of it, it'll make anything vanish. But Pip assured me I was using the right packets. He's the cause of all this trouble. Whatever am I to do now? 
take off your petticoats. Ooh, the shame of it. Well, you two had better turn your backs. Here, George, take out of that petticoat. Well, Sammy, here's another <coughs> sorry pickle caused by Pip. I think I'd be better off without him altogether. As Pip heard George speak those words, he realised what he must do. He would go somewhere far, far away from the story store where no one could ever find him and live there all alone and never be any trouble to George or anyone else ever again. And so it was that Pip was long gone before he could hear what else George had to say about him. But you know, Sammy, I don't know what I would do without Pip. He's my best friend in all the world. And if anything ever happened to him, it would break my heart. Pip, Pip! I'll have to go and find him. He can't survive on his own in this terrible storm. We'll come with you, George. No, I'd like you to stay in the story store in case he manages to find his way home. But how will you find him in the dark? I don't know, but I have to find him somehow. I just have to. to follow Pip's scent in the dark, won't you? Goodbye. Come on, then. Let's go. So the faithful dog Biscuit led George through the dark and stormy night until they reached the lonely spot where Pip was trying to take shelter. Pip! 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 <laughs> it's George! to me, Pip. It's Pip. I can hear him. Pip! Pip! We found you, Pip. Oh, we found you at last. Oh, ho, ho. Well, Sammy, I found a packet of real razor flour and I've made these cakes for Pip and George when they come back. And I'm putting George's display together again to cheer him up. That's a nice idea. But I think the only thing that will cheer George up is finding Pip. It's wonderful to see you again, Pip. But now I'm as lost as you. However, are we going to find our way back to the story store? Can you lead us back? Do you know the way? The dog Biscuit knew the way to the story store for it only had to follow the delicious smell of Granny Clump's newly baked cakes to lead them safely through the darkness. We found him. We found Pip. Oh, here they are. <laughs> They're safe and sound at last. And so at long last, they came home to the warmest of welcomes. Why don't we all celebrate by having the cakes I baked? Mm. They smell delicious. Well, it's so wonderful to have Pip back that I think we should show him how much we love him by letting him have the first cake. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Go on, Pip. Help yourself. Oh, dear. I must have used too much razor flour in that one. Look out for the boxes! Oh, no. He's done it again. <laughs> <laughs> the story store, the story store Wonders are waiting for you to explore Peep through the window, open the door Into the story, the story store, the story store 
Stories, surprises and secrets galore And dreams that come true are waiting for you Inside the Story Store The Story Store, the Story Store Stories, surprises and secrets galore And dreams that come true are waiting for you Inside the store, the story store, the story store, wonders are waiting for you to explore. Into the window, open the door, into the story store. Granny Clump was all of a twitter because her grandson Sammy was coming to visit her that very afternoon. I'll have a lovely garden party for Sammy today. Oh, but just look at the state of the garden. I'm getting too old to look after things properly these days. The flowers are withered and the swing and the seesaw are both broken. Whatever am I to do? Oh, look, it's Bert the handyman. Yoo-hoo, Bert! The very person I need. Have a little job for you to do. In next to no time, Granny Clump set off for the story store, while Bert the handyman began to repair the swing and the seesaw. As Granny approached the story store, she saw George and Pip having a little nap in their garden. Yoo-hoo, George! Mm -hmm. It's only me! Oh. Um, oh. Oh. How do, Granny Clump? Lovely day. I just wondered if you had anything in the story store that would help me perk up a bit. Well, now, let me think. <coughs> Wait a minute. I know the very thing. A little sip from the water of that pool is just what you need. It's the water of youth. My, my. What a nice taste. It makes you feel all tingly. <laughs> oh, how delightful. I'm all light-headed. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, Granny Clump. Pip's telling me that there's a customer in the story store. That water was so stimulating that I think I'll just try another teensy weensy little sip. When George entered the story store, he discovered that his customer was none other than Sammy Clump. Hello, George. I'm going to see my granny this afternoon, and I thought I'd like to buy her a little present. Well, well, Sammy, it's a small world, and no mistake. Your granny's here, you know. She's in the garden. In fact, I think I hear her coming now. Here I come. Whoopee! I hope it'll be dee. I bet you custard you can't catch me. She must have drunk too much of the water of youth. She's behaving like a two-year-old. <laughs> no, Granny, don't do it. Here I come. Yes, Granny. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Ho, 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 ho. 
will come upon her from either side. It's all right, George. I'll help you to catch her. Whee! <laughs> I knew that was a flying umbrella. I just knew it. <laughs> However, will we get her down? Here's something that should do the trick. It's a tin of fly powder. With a little of this sprinkled on us, we can float up to the ceiling ourselves and catch Granny. All right, Sammy. Now. Yippee! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee, you owe me a custard, you couldn't catch me. <laughs> Whatever will she get up to next? When George and Sammy came down to earth once more, they set off to find the runaway granny. But no matter where they looked, they couldn't find her. Yoo-hoo! George, I think I'll just have another tiny sip of that lovely magic water. It says, that's another custard you owe me, signed G. Clump. Yippee! <laughs> that's that then. The swing's mended, and so is the seesaw. <laughs> It'll take anybody's weight now. It's a banshee! Oh no, it's not! It's Granny Clump! <laughs> oh, lovely! At last I have the garden I've always dreamed of. I can't wait to try out the seesaw. Come on, Bert. Oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't. We can't stop searching until we find your granny. <laughs> oh. And she's in no condition to be let loose on her own. Yippee! What is it, Pip? There's no one there. <laughs> I can't take another step. My granny's on a seesaw. Nay, oh. Yeah, well, at least she's out of arm's way there. Stop it. I'll have to sit down. Oh, stop it. Me too. I'm exhausted. Oh, no. Give over. Oh, how wonderful! Oh, you've all come to my garden party! <laughs> oh, oh. Whee! <laughs> I'd have been better off with a banshee. Granny Clump was delighted to have guests at her garden party, even if they did all seem mysteriously tired. She offered them the delicious goodies she'd made earlier, but since none of them seemed hungry, Granny thought the best thing to do was to eat everything up herself. And so Bert and George and Sammy and Pip lay sleeping, hoping in their dreams that when they wakened up, Granny Clump would be her old self once more. The story store, the story store Wonders are waiting for you to explore Peep through the window, open the door Into the story store, the story store Story surprises and secrets galore And dreams that come true are waiting for you 
inside the story store. The story store, the story store. Stories, surprises, and secrets galore, and dreams that come true are waiting for you inside the store. The story store, the story store. Wonders are waiting for you to explore. Into the window, open the door. Into the story store. One blustery autumn morning, George and Pip were up bright and early to open the doors of the story store. Ah, oh, well, Pip, it's time to open up for the day. Oh, what a wind! Never known anything like it. It's all right, Pip. It was only a gust of wind. It's made a terrible mess of the story store, though. I wonder if I've anything to help me with the tidying up. Wait a minute. I know the very thing. There they are. Just what we need. The helping hands. You two, that's enough fun and games. It's time to tidy up now. <laughs> but it wasn't only in the story store that the howling wind had caused such havoc. Angus Puggles' broken chimney pot was blowing so much smoke into his parlour that he couldn't see to make his tea and toast. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I'd better have a look at that broken chimney pot. Come back! That hat cost me a fortune. Come back! Good. That's everything tidied up now, inside and out. But what's that you've just caught flying past in the wind? <laughs> You caught my hat, George. Thanks very much. Don't thank me, Angus. Thank the helping hands here. Waiting to work at a snap of the fingers. You think they could help me repair my chimney pot? I'm having terrible trouble with it. You should really get Bert the handyman to do that, Angus. He'd fix it in a jiffy. Ah, but wouldn't that be a terrible expense? Worth every penny, Angus. Worth every penny. Oh, I'm not so sure. But Bert the handyman had troubles of his own, for the wind had smashed his ladders to smithereens. Well, Angus, I could repair your chimney pot for ten pounds. Five pounds for a new chimney pot, and five pounds to cement it in place. No, no, I'll just put up with the old chimney pot. It'll be all right when the wind stops. Ah, oh, well, it's maybe just as well, for I don't know how I could have got up to that chimney pot with my ladders all smashed to smithereens. But that night, the wind blew harder than ever, until at last the wobbly chimney pot blew down and crashed into Angus's room. Ah! What was that? What a mess! If I get Bert the handyman to fix this lot, it'll cost me a fortune. But wait a minute. I've got a better idea. That's right, George. I'd like to use the helping hands for a free trial period before I actually pay for them. All right, Angus. But just be sure you don't work them too hard. 
All right, you two. I want you to mend the windows and the bed and clear up all of that mess on the floor and look lively while you're at it. those jobs? Having completed their tasks, the helping hands wanted to return to their box for a nice long rest. But Angus Puggle had other ideas. Just a wee minute, you two. You're not quite finished yet. And that's the problem, George. The ladders were all smashed to bits in the wind. Do you have a ladder for sale in the story store? Here's something better than a ladder, Bert. Leg lengtheners. What do they do? I'll show you. They may look like ordinary boots, but just watch what they can do. With these leg lengtheners, you can reach any chimney pot in the land without a ladder. And they go down just as easily as they go up. I've never seen the like in all my born days. How much would they be now? Five pounds the pair. I'm a little short at the moment. Not to worry, you'll be a lot taller when you put on the leg lengtheners. No, George, I mean I'm short of money just now. I don't have five pounds. Never mind, you can take them now and pay me later. It's a kind offer, George, but I like to pay my way. I'll just leave them for now, but I'll be back, George. I'll find a way to get that five pounds somehow. <laughs> In the meantime, Angus Puggle was ignoring George's warning about overworking the helping hands. Even though they were very tired, he made them clean the house from top to bottom. Is that my food? I can't see for my hat. Well, I can't be bothered to move, so you can just tip my hat back and start spooning the food into my mouth. But this was too much for the helping hands. Angus had been so lazy and so bossy that he had to learn his lesson. Oh, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And then the helping hands knocked the crowd out of Angus's top hat before running back to the story store. Goodness gracious, whatever is the matter with you two? Oh, I see. Angus Puggle made you do all that, did he? Well, what you did to him serves him right. I wish to register a complaint. Well, you needn't bother. The helping hands have just told me what you got up to. You should be ashamed of yourself, Angus. I am. I am. Oh, I am. I don't know what came over me. I was only trying to save a wee bit of money. You were just being tight-fisted as usual, Angus. And you can start making up for it now by shaking hands. I'm sorry, lads. I didn't mean it. Well, Angus, it's all turned out for the best. You paid Bert five pounds to mend your chimney, and he used the money to buy the leg lengtheners he wanted. And now here we are, before a cosy, smoke-free fire eating toast made by the helping hands. That's true, George. And the best thing of all is that my hat didn't go to waste, and I saved a fortune by not having to buy a new chimney pot. The story store, the story store Wonders are waiting for you to explore Peep through the window, open the door Into the story store, store, the story store Story surprises and secrets galore And dreams that come true are waiting for you 
inside the story store.